This episode of the Slewcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where we usually say our seasoning would take your barbecue from good to great. So let's look over some of the seasonings that he has, shall we? Yes. First up, first up here, the savory. Savory is the exact seasoning that the Mad Canadian himself uses on his pulled pork. It's a salty, savory mix that is sure to be a favorite in your next barbecue. The Brits blend. It's a, it's a mix of a numerous of spices that goes well with so many different meals that you could make. Southwest. Mrs. Mad Canadian <laughs> uses that one for her chili. Uh, it's really good, especially with fall coming around the corner here. Chili weather. Yes looking forward to it and also the two border we've talked about the two border before it's a really really good mix of maple sugar red pepper flakes it's just good on a numerous of different meals breakfast lunch dinner goes with a number of different things be sure to check out those and other great seasonings over at the mad canadian bbq.com be sure to use the promo code sloopcast10 at checkout for 10 percent off Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This is where we talk to our YouTube friends. Hi, YouTube friends. <laughs> this is where we'd normally be playing our our Black Keys intro song, but YouTube, they're they're not very fun over in the YouTube land. So, yep, yep. The YouTube friends and Discord friends are the same friends. I mean, the, the the Discord friends are the more exclusive, of course, but you know how it is. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing pretty well over here, all things considered. How are you, Jared? <laughs> uh, you know, still trying to deal with the idea that there's not going to be any Ohio State football this fall. Um, that there may or may not be football in January. And having no idea what that would look like, even if there were football like or if there is football what does it look like so it, it none of it is good i'm going to go ahead and just say none of it's good and that that all stinks uh i i do in fact have video brawls um maybe hop out of the channel and hop back into the channel do something like that but it's on it's always it's always me though with the video issues and i don't know why mhm mm anyway um, yeah, so we do have a lot to get to today. Um, it's going to not be the most fun episode because we're essentially going to be talking about how we need to fire Kevin Warren. And that's he it's just been a complete disaster on on the Big Ten side. It's, yeah, we've talked about we talked on years past about how bad of a job Ohio State has done in the PR stand. Well, now it's the conference as a whole. Now I, it's just a this big, is, big PR this disaster is beyond though. Absolutely beyond. It's yeah, it's, it's been a complete disaster for the big 10. Um, just from the bottom or from the top down it, it's not, it's, the, um, you, we can have a discussion about whether there should be football or yet this fall. That, that to me is not separate, but to the side. Mm -hmm. I think the issue is a, you know what? We're going to get into all of that. We do have a piece of good news. Let's get, the, let's, let's do the good news first. Then, then we're going to talk about the dysfunctional big 10 uh, so the piece of good news is, is that Ohio State picks up another commitment in their 2022 class. Um, we've talked a lot about Deshaun McCullough in in recent 
Eh, maybe not the past couple weeks. But we are hitting the recruit. We're about to get a dog cameo. Everyone meet Apollo. He is very <laughs> cuddly today. Um, if you want to see my dog, you have to check out the YouTube channel. That's that's just reality. Sorry, audio listeners. Um, yeah, uh, Deshaun McCullough is, uh, like I said, a really good linebacker from Kansas. He's not not necessarily really from Kansas. Um, not he has a lot of Ohio roots. His dad is um, a employee of the Kansas City Chiefs, but his brother plays for Miami of Ohio. His dad played for Miami of Ohio. It's an Ohio rooted family that is living in Kansas right now because that's where the Kansas City Chiefs are sort of. They're, they're in Missouri. It's right across the river. It's fine. Don't get caught up on the details. <laughs> Point is, uh, this is now the third like big time athletic linebacker that Ohio State's pulled down in this class alone. Um, a lot of people might be more familiar with Gabe Powers as uh, he is from Marysville, Ohio. Uh, if you and if you don't know, that's just a, a suburb outside of Columbus. So. Don't forget yeah. about CJ Dix out of Dayton, Ohio, for yeah. a specific Archbishop Alter. Yeah, absolutely. So the 2022 class is off to a really nice start. Um, Ohio State has taken some L's as far as uh, some of their quarterback prospects that they were looking at for the 2022 class, but we don't have to really count them as, as, as L's quite yet. Uh, it's insanely early in the recruiting class. So what well, looking at that looking at those linebackers again, yeah. very early in the recruiting cycle though, but all three there, Powers, McCullough, and Hicks, top seventy one. Yeah. Not not just not top seventy one in their position, it's no. overall. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. So Ohio State already killing it in the linebacker. So a lot of people were worried. I think Ohio State only currently has one and I say I think it's like one and a half uh, because one of them is an athlete's yeah one and a half in just the half, just half just half <laughs> every every all four others Marysville Dayton Westchester Westchester oh no 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 um, what I was saying is in the 2021 class Ohio State has like one and a half linebackers currently committed to that class. So a lot of people were worried about, oh, what's Ohio State going to do with their linebackers? Is you know, and of course you have a new linebackers coach in, and so everyone starts hitting maybe not the panic button, but the maybe maybe more of a, a concern button. Like, oh, what's he doing? Do we have a, a linebacker coach that can't recruit? What's going on? What's going on? And I think I I, I know we've said it like. They're not going to do a lot of linebackers in 2021. They're going to focus a lot of the, on the defensive backs in 2021. We'll, we'll take care of the linebackers in 2022. And that's obviously coming into fruition here. Uh, and, you know, it's another really great recruiting class start. Ohio State's doing a really good job. They have lost some momentum on the 2021 side. And, uh, you know, that clear number one class isn't quite as clear because A, you lose a defensive end, which I'm not I'm not super worried about. But as we said but, as we said before, well and that I still now hold, that I still Alabama's on a complete tear right now. So yeah. Alabama's really closed that gap. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll really emphasize what we've said for months now. Yeah. Even still today, even though Alabama is less than two points away from Ohio State for the crown for the uh, 2021 recruiting class. If Ohio State gets JTT and Emeka, it's a done deal. I don't see how I don't see how Alabama would be able to take the number one when Ohio State would potentially be able to add two in the top seven with yeah. Emeka being number seven there. I just don't see how Alabama would do that unless they're able to recruit a lot more than what they should be allowed to recruit. Well, and we, we have rules now that we didn't have rules 10 years ago to help to prevent over signing. Yep. 
Yeah, but also you have to keep an eye out for for decommitments, which is what's hurt Ohio State. Um, not not in a huge way, um, but yeah, if because Ohio State's they lost a the defensive end, their defensive end recruiting class is still great, and that's even before the consideration of adding JTT out of Washington, mm-hmm. and you know the wide receivers are even really great even without adding a Mecca Abuka, which, you know, I, I still feel like Ohio State's way more likely to and there's, you know, smoke about Oklahoma and smoke about Oregon and there's there's a lot of stuff around a Mecca Abuka and JTT. I don't think I'm not gonna say it's not realistic or that it's, you know, all BS or anything like that. Cause there is truth to it. I'm not going to say that there isn't, but I also think that at a certain point you have to, as a, someone who writes a website that r- relies on clicks, how many times can you write the story that Mecca Buka seems solid to Ohio state? without like eventually you have to still talk about one of the top uncommitted players in the entire class. You have to talk about him, but you can't just keep saying, yeah, it seems like he's going to go to Ohio state. You have to start adding some intrigue. Oh, JTT Oregon's a serious contender. Uh, They are. I'm not, I'm not saying Ohio state's a 100% slam dunk. I'm not saying that. But I think JTT to Oregon is overstated and it seems more impactful. It's It seems more urgent than it really is just because that news is newer. But just because the news is newer doesn't mean it's more accurate or more urgent. It's just new. That's all. Yep. All right, Kyle. Let's... Uh, I think let's get into the meat of the show. Um, I, we have to just start talking about the dysfunction of the Big Ten. If you didn't listen to last week's episode, um, we didn't talk a lot about the season being canceled. And yes, I'm saying canceled, Kevin Warren. You you cannot say Ohio State's not going to play football in this calendar year and be like, oh no, we postponed it. Postponed, it's pushing it back a month. You You cannot say, you know, I'll give you, I'll tell you what, Kevin Warren, I'll give you this. I'm talking directly to you, Kevin Warren, and I'm going to do this all episode. You can, if you want to, Austin information just arrives and he wants us to know, screw Kevin Warren. Listen, uh, Austin, I've been trying. The funny thing is, if you listen to the earlier seasons of the episode, we cursed a lot more than we do now. We've we've tried to level that off, but frankly, fuck Kevin Warren. <laughs> I, I I don't have I don't have any other way of saying that right now. Anyway, um, I'm talking directly to you, Kevin Warren. I completely lost what I was saying before. I, I I lost my train of thought. Do you have any idea where I was going with any of that, Kyle? Nope. Nope. Ah, crap. <laughs> well, you're you're talking about postponing. That's what it was. I tell you what, Kevin Warren, I would give you the, the, oh, it's not canceled. It's postponed. If everyone plays football in January, if half of college football plays in, in like October through December and the other half of college football plays in January to March, that's a canceled season. That's not a legitimate football season for anyone involved. Not for the people who played in 2020 and not for the people who played in 2021. That is not a legitimate football season. Not, not to mention, too, of how many players are just going to be like, I'm just, I'm not going to deal with it. And I'm not going to even try to bother trying to play. I'm going to get myself ready for the NFL draft. And at this case, whoever does decide to play, it's going to be pretty much like a JV version yeah. of the teams. And I want to get into that a little bit more heavy a little bit later as far as will everyone play so on and so forth. Um, So I want to start by talking about the big 10 parents 
uh, most notably from Ohio State, Iowa, and, and Illinois parents were there as well, going to the Big Ten offices to demonstrate. Uh, they were immediately met with police officers uh, hired by the Big Ten and sort of claiming private property, and they got moved a block away from the Big Ten offices because the Big Ten continue to be cowards. Kevin Warren continues to be a coward. The entire Big Ten office continues to be cowardly. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to mince words on that. And then, but, but you know what? Regardless of where they were actually stationed, it still achieved what it was supposed to achieve because the media showed up to cover it. So what we essentially end up having is an impromptu press conference um, led mostly by Randy Wade, who, if you have have not figured this out by now, is Sean Wade's dad. I suddenly got really insecure that his name's not Randy. It's Randy, right? You know what? You you, you figure that out. (laughs) It is. Thank you, Austin. Um, I don't know... If you guys have never just recorded a podcast live before, you have no idea sometimes what the crap is running through your head. Anyway, so you have Randy Wade and he essentially gives an impromptu press conference in Chicago. And what is most striking to me about Randy Wade giving the press conference Number one is that he, under no obligation, not, he is not employed by anyone or anything having to do with college football, with the Big Ten, with Ohio State. That's not his, his job. So under no imposed obligation, he stands in front of reporters. Uh, this is a man who is not media trained who is not being paid to talk to reporters. This is just a concerned father. And he stands out in the outdoors of Chicago and talks to the media and then takes questions from the media. He reiterates, he said it on Twitter so many times, but you know, it's different now because there are cameras on him and he's actually speaking. He reiterates that this is not about playing football at all cost. That's not what this is. Again, I, that's a that's a line I'm going to reemphasize a few times on today's show. We are not mad at Kevin Warren for canceling football. That is not what's happening here. Canceling football might be the correct move. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm, this is not play football at all costs. That's not what Randy Wade is saying. That is not what Kyle and I are saying. This, this is not us saying you must play football at all costs. May the consequences of COVID be damned. It's not what we're saying. It's not what Randy Wade is saying. What the issue here is, is that the lack of transparency, the lack of communication, the lack of honesty that has come from the Big Ten offices. That's the issue here. And again, what strikes me is Randy Wade taking questions from reporters, speaking to reporters, taking all of this on himself as a volunteer. And where's Kevin Warren at? He's, he's sitting in his desk with pictures of him behind him. Yeah. Uh, where, where's Kevin Warren? Where are you? You've not spoken to the press except for Tuesday night where you gave an incredibly short interview on the Big Ten Network. An interview... And pushing it too. I'm sorry, say again, Kyle interviewing is really pushing it to not i wouldn't even call that an interview it's just him saying words yeah not addressing anything yeah let's let's not let's not pretend for a second by the way that the big 10 doesn't own 49 percent of the big 10 network so it's not an honest interview it's like if kyle interviewed me it's, it's not it's not a real interview 
And and then on top of that, the for the couple of minutes he was on Big Ten Network, he evades every question asked. Evades every question asked. Does not answer anything with any substance. And the reporter doesn't push him and like, is he, is the reporter risking his job if he really holds Kevin Warren's feet to the fire on not answering the questions? How much time did the reporter actually have? I'm, I'm not putting that on him. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, but I don't want to get weighed down in that conversation. Fact of the matter is, is that Kevin Warren gave us like two minutes of zero substance. What, what are we supposed to do with that? Then he goes radio silent for eight days. Nothing. The entire Big Ten is blowing up around him. Nebraska's talking about leaving. You have mixed messages coming from the Big Ten office and Ohio State about fall football, spring football, winter football. You have... Uh, you have, I forget who it was now. I think, was it, was it Brom? I forget. But you had like, oh, here's my plan for returning to college football. You have Ryan Day over here. He's announcing a completely different plan to re- return to college football. Was there even a vote of the presidents? Because we have this president over here saying there was no vote. And we have this president over here saying that there was a vote. Was there a vote? The message oh, was, this more, was this more of a big statement from Kevin Warren to all athletic directors, all presidents, to all the universities saying, hey, you're going to say what, I, what I'm telling you guys is saying you're going to support my decision. Maybe it's I, I don't think he has the. Well, I don't. What what part of any of this makes you think that he would even have the wherewithal to communicate that down? Because nothing has been consistent from the Big Ten coaches, the Big Ten athletic directors, the Big Ten presidents. The mm-hmm. message has been inconsistent. I would almost applaud him if the Big Ten had a solid talking point that was consistent across all the different phases, all the different universities, all the different levels, but that's not been the case. You know what, too? And this is probably most likely the case why they really tried to come out and be one of the first ones to come out and say that they're canceling the season is hope that everybody else jumps on board. Like, oh, look at the Big Ten. Let's follow suit with them. They're the leaders and legends and all that too. <laughs> but unfortunately, with everything, everything that you're saying here too, just they just drop the ball and then and then all the other conferences and you're seeing it in um, and just short videos, um, gifts and all that out there, just making fun of the Big Ten right now. Big Ten conference right now is a laughing joke because of how it's being handled. Yeah, and unfortunately, the leadership of the Big Ten is more legendary than it is factual right now. The Big Ten, who has always put themselves up on some some sort of pedestal, they I believe that they really thought that once they canceled football, that all the other conferences were just going to follow suit. I mean, the Pac-12 did, but well, you know, who cares what the Pac-12 has to say about anything? And I'll say this, if they were able to get one more, whether it was the ACC or the Big 12, yeah. if one of those other conferences followed suit, we'd be having a complete different conversation right now because there's no way that there would be a quote-unquote season or a legit season if you would have just SEC and one other conference. Well, and you have uh, out of Omaha, I think this is incredibly interesting, what you have uh, is this coming out of Omaha um, from the Omaha World Herald uh, by I I don't know how to pronounce this man's name. Isn't that just very Sloopcastian of us? Uh, it's it's M O O S. So Moose Moss. I don't know. Sure. 
Um, moose. <laughs> I, I, I Brawls says moose. I don't know if I trust him, but that's what he said. The, <laughs> um, and Austin the cow noise. might just be. <laughs> I I don't I don't know that there's a difference between the cow noise and what I just said, Austin. The. <laughs> Uh, he says Ohio State's Gene Smith, Penn State's uh, Sandy. Oh, too many names. Um, athlete, let's just, the athletic directors uh, from Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan pushed hardest for fall football, while Big Ten Commissioner Warren repeatedly preferred this spring. Apparently, uh, let's see. He. Uh, he goes on to say uh, that a Zoom meeting between all the parties did not happen, by which he means both the athletic directors and the presidents. Uh, there was he's, When he said that there was a unanimous agreement among all conference athletic directors for keeping a season in the fall. So... You really just need to go read this because I don't want to read it verbatim to you right now. Um, point is, is that there was a lot of miscommunication, intentional or not, about the fact that what the what the what were the presidents saying? What were the athletic directors saying? And why did Kevin Warren keep those parties separate? And why? There is subtly. Oh, well, he was talking about my moose versus moose. Uh, see, yeah, there's a subtle difference there. Um, why were you keeping these meetings separate? So now we start to understand why that there's so much miscommunication and so many different narratives and potentially why there were so many bad reports. Go we, we had a lot of bad reporting coming out of the Big Ten, larger Big Ten media sphere. Why? Well, these good reporters with normally good sources, why were there so many bad reports? Well, it seems like Nebraska didn't know what Michigan was doing and didn't know what Ohio State and Penn State were doing. There were athletic directors that didn't know what presidents were doing within the same freaking university. It's almost like they rushed into a decision when they yeah. could have just postponed the season for a month and just sort of it, said, oh, well, you know what, what, what the ACC and what the SEC are doing is better by starting in October. Let's just push things back a month. Let's get some meetings. They had how many months? All of them. They had all of the months. We've been in lockdown since March. It is now August. It's, they just rushed into this decision. They didn't take the time to get everyone in the same meeting. There was not a, a, a sincere amount of communication happening within the universities, within the conferences. This is an entire rush job that the more news comes out, seems like it was being pushed by Kevin Warren. And one of my favorite, well, least favorite, um, <laughs> however you choose to see it, things I have seen thus far was apparently, apparently, Kevin Warren was surprised that he has received so much backlash for canceling the Big Ten football season. And yes, Kevin Warren, I will continue to say cancel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the in the bad thing, yeah, and I was just about to say that here, Brawley, is that a lot of people are really looking at just how just he's saying one thing about canceling football for entire conference, but is okay for his son to play football. In the SEC, too. 
I don't want to I don't want to spend too much time on this because like his son is like I think a fourth year college player. I think he's a redshirt junior if I am am not mistaken. The kid's an adult. I how is that any different than than the Big 10 conference with all the kids and everybody in there? I don't because see Because Kevin Warren does have authority over what happens in the Big Ten. But Kevin Warren does not have authority of what his child does. And I'm 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 starting to receive a lot of I know this is an unpopular opinion. Um I know I'm getting it from Kyle right now. I had some people come at me on Twitter. I had some people come at me on the Buckeye Scoop message board for this opinion. And Austin and Brawls are coming at me on the Discord right now. I know it's an unpopular opinion. I don't want to turn Kevin Warren's kid into some sort of lightning rod simply because his dad is an asshole. No, it shouldn't be directed towards his son. It's at Kevin Warren himself because he's saying one thing but isn't doing what he's saying in the other hand too but we have like, no idea understand, understand, understand. we have yeah, no idea I, what their relationship is like what what is his relationship like with his son maybe he calls up his son and says hey I don't want you playing football this year and he might say fuck you dad you're an asshole and I don't like you or he might say dad I respect you, but I really need to do this. We have no idea what their relationship is like. Maybe he but hates he goes, his dad. He goes, he goes on there and says that he has the best interest of the parents making this decision. It's like, no, you're not listening to the parents. You're not listening to anybody. And obviously it sounds like you're not listening to athletic directors of a conference that you're supposed that, to be administrating. That's That's different. He's not listening to his athletic directors. He never had conversations with players. He never had conversation with, with parents. That's all egregious. I, I'm not that I'm not defending any of that. I really just want to, we can talk about how there should have been communication with players directly from the commissioner. There should have been communication with coaches directly from the commissioner with parents players directly from the commissioner those conversations should have happened there should have been conversations that included presidents of the universities and the athletic directors of universities and the coaches of these football programs all of that should have happened and we can talk about all of that and how kevin warren has failed at all of that but I want to leave his kid out of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think they, I think most people want to leave his kid out of it, but they use that as an example of the hypocrisy that he has, though. It's it's just mind blowing that just you can't trust anything that he says no. at this point, or even I am not the he He's not really even saying anything in general. I'm not defending Kevin Warren even one little bit. This is me defending his kid. Or at least maybe not even defending his kid. Just trying to keep that topic of conversation aside. There's so many failures on yeah. Kevin Warren's it, part that I don't even think it's necessary to bring his kid into it. And I feel like there's a lot of people within the Big Ten media sphere who would be thrilled if his kid didn't get to play football this year. And that's yeah. effed up. That's two wrongs. The last I checked, don't make a right. I just want to leave his kid out of it. I just, I think yeah. that's unfair. Not the Kevin Warren, fuck Kevin Warren. To his son. I, I don't want to make him responsible for the fact that his dad is a dipshit. They're they're discussing if this is my worst take of all time, I believe, in the Discord right now. But I, I think that they're thinking my Nick Vanette take is worse, and now there's conversations about your opinions on Mario Kart being worse. But that was a that was a Discord conversation that we're not going to uh, 
try to bring into the podcast. We're going to keep your terrible, terrible Mario Kart opinions off pod for right now, Kyle. All right. But let's 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 talk about some some good takes. Some good takes from our friend, the Mad Canadian. By the way, real, real, real quick, before we move on from that, uh, I have, uh, this is from Teddy Greenstein. Uh, he says the Big Ten Commissioner, Kevin Warren, told him that he did not think the decision to postpone, cancel, postpone football would be scrutinized as much as it has been. Quote, it has, it was completely mishandled. It was botched. Kevin and I talked the other day and he agreed well okay I at least he can uh acknowledge the fact that he's a giant fuck up now take that the next step kevin warren and resign you you were hand you have done one thing you have done one thing in your time as commissioner in the big 10 and you have failed at it meteorically you have meteorically failed at it do everyone a favor and resign. Please proceed with the ad read now. <laughs> Mad Canadian. Well, if you missed out on his amazing 30% off, you still have a chance for 10% off of all of his, all orders. You use Slipcast 10 at checkout for 10% off. Some great seasonings that he offers here. Talked about, I think we'll, we'll cover it again here. The coffee and Q. I think we talk about that one every week. One of Jared's favorite coffee and Q has. They're all one of my favorites. They're all one of the favorites. I think there's somebody on YouTube that I enjoy watching, and he always says, "My favorite. This is my favorite character. This is my favorite with everything." I think that's you, Jared. That sounds like you're, me. You're yeah. Everything. Every every seasoning from the mad canadian which hello mad canadian uh <laughs> is jared's favorite here now uh, so what else jared what else is your favorite here coffee and q and what else uh, we already talked about the brits blend have we talked about the carry yet the carry steak oh, that is one of my favorites it's also one of my favorites once again <laughs> they're all one of my favorites yeah, carry steak. You put it on obviously your steak. You put it on hamburgers. It's it's a very very versatile season. You can't go wrong using it at all. Uh, the Discord, which we got a few people in our Discord listening in here, so why don't we bring up the Discord seasoning? It's the four horsemen. Uh, it, the four horsemen in the Discord are cousins. Um, in that the Four Horsemen has a saltier base while the Discord has a uh, sweeter base, but they're both a spicy four pepper blend uh, that will kick you in the in the tongue. <laughs> I don't know why I stopped myself from cussing that time. Uh, will kiss you. It kiss you. I said kiss that time, probably because I avoided one from the dog who was in my lap again. <sighs> uh <laughs> Uh, but will kick you in the teeth. Sure. Kick you in the teeth. Uh, it's a very spicy blend. Like I said, the Discord being uh, with a sweeter base and the Four Horsemen being with a saltier base, but both of them uh, with an incredibly potent Four Pepper blend. Mm -hmm. Be sure to check out all the great seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 for 10% off. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. All right, Kyle. We did, after eight days, finally hear from Kevin Warren. Now, here might be the wrong word. Because as I talked about at the top of the show, um, he, he did not talk to reporters. Uh, he did not even uh, stand in front of a camera in an empty room. Um, Apollo, buddy. It's adorable, but but it's too much. I'm going to have to ask you to get down and not take my, my headset with you. All right. This is, I'm gonna, Kyle, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this letter. 
I'm going to read this letter in its entirety. This is from Kevin Warren. Uh, like I said, he did not speak. He simply released an open letter. You know, the parents did an open letter. Why can't he do an open letter? Well, because you're paid to be responsible for these decisions. And part of that responsibility is talking to the media. That's Here's why. The question. Here's the question. Did this actually come from him? Or did somebody write it for him? Oh, it was totally written by lawyers. A hundred percent. That's why it took eight so it days. Really, so it really isn't from him. No, but it is, legally speaking. Okay. Uh, Brawls says, the Buckeye Weekly breakdown of the letter was great. I did not hear that. I have to be careful listening to other people. And I love Tom and Tony. And when I, it's one of the first Buckeye podcasts I go to when I do listen to someone else's podcast. But I do have to be careful because if I listen to too many podcasts during the week, I end up just repeating what they say. And no one wants that. <laughs> ah, all right. Um, he says, and feel free to jump in whenever you want on this, Kyle, because it's full of just turds. So when I, when I step in a turd, make sure to let me know, okay? Did a turd sandwich. Uh, I write on this occasion to share with you additional information regarding the Big Ten's conference decision to postpone the 2020-21 fall sports season. Canceled. Uh, yeah. For, first off, if we're calling it a fall season and it's not taking place in the fall, you canceled it. Mm -hmm. Moving on. We thoroughly understand and deeply value what sports mean to our student athletes, their families, our coaches, and our fans. Did you do talk you, to them? Do you now? <laughs> because I don't believe that you thoroughly understand unless... You, really you actually talk to them and not actually have police come and order them to go a block away away from their Big Ten office. You cannot you really did there. You wouldn't have done that. You cannot claim to thoroughly understand someone when you have not spoken to them. Furthermore, yeah. uh, Kyle, I'm going to go back to that Teddy Greenstein quote. He says he thoroughly understood, right? He said he thoroughly understands. Okay. Um, Warren told him he did not think the decision to postpone football would be scrutinized as much as it's been. Oh, so you thoroughly understand yet when you cancel big 10 football for the first time. And I don't know, like 130 years, you think that was just, everyone's just going to say, okay. Big 10 football has been played through two world wars the Spanish flu pandemic and any, a bunch of hurricanes. We've played through a bunch of different hurricanes. Uh, Heck, it was just two years ago when there was a hurricane coming through here in Raleigh, when NC state played Notre Dame yeah. in a monsoon. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm saying. Like, don't, don't say you thoroughly understand yeah. when you just got caught with your pants down. Moving on. The vote by the Big Ten Council of Presidents and Chancellors was overwhelmingly in support of postponing fall sports and will not be revisited. Was okay. it? There's been a lot of confusion as to whether a vote actually happened. We've already talked mm -hmm. about that. So, I, you, you, you're a liar, maybe? The decision was thorough and deliberative and based on sound feedback, guidance, and advice and advice from medical experts. So I don't, I don't understand one thing though, Jared. So uh -huh. if there really was a vote, there uh -huh. really was, mm -hmm. and you are trying to be as understanding as possible. Mm hmm why don't you release how many what the voting was let alone who voted for yes or no but what was it ultimately because there was mixings that we saw it was like oh it was a 11 to 2 or whatever the case may be 
nothing officially came out with that. No, and you're you, and you're you're not going to see that. You're not going to no. see a vote count, let alone who voted for what. I mean, Shoot. we can't even agree if a vote actually happened at this point. So, even if someone says, "Oh, by the way, it was seven to six, and these," because even if a president or well, we all know the athletic directors weren't involved. But even if the even if a president comes out and says, "Oh, I voted for fall football," they're all gonna say that because none of them want to have to talk to their. No one has. No one wants to answer questions from their boosters and their top donators, asking questions. So they're all gonna lie, mm. just for the record. Uh, despite the decision to postpone fall sports, cancel. We continue our work to find a path forward that creates a healthy and safe environment for all Big Ten student athletes to compete in the sports they love in a manner that helps to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and protects both student athletes and surrounding communities. That's that's great. Um, here's the thing. You aren't putting a path forward. You close the path. Um, you close the path that that's it. You could have postponed and cause since this has happened one, they, they cite, they'll cite this, um, heart study, which has been widely criticized since it sort of got put up on a pedestal by the big 10 and the PAC 12 that that heart study, there's a lot wrong with it. But then they'll say, well, it's an unknown. That basically the COVID-19 can affect your heart in a long-term manner. But all studies to this point suggest that, yes, that's possible, but it's not any more likely to happen than with a flu in this specific case. And the other thing too, I mean, I'm, I don't want to be that guy and be like, well, it's just one person or just a handful of people, but college football, football in general is a dangerous sport. Yeah. I mean, they could, could just Ryan completely change your life. I mean, Ryan, we, we've seen it. Kyle, we've seen it. Ryan Shazier. Yes. Ryan Shazier or even, um, his name's escaping me over in Rutgers not too long ago too. Yeah. It happens all the time. And you know what? The players understand the risk and they're wanting to continue to play. It's the same thing here. Players have the option to opt out if they were given the option or continue to play with the risks. Understanding it, making a, a an adult decision yeah. to play. But they're not given that option. And as far as, you know, the student that, and, you know, they talk about the surrounding communities. I, I'm all for canceling fans in the stadium, or at least in like a completely diminished fashion. And I'm all for not doing tailgating. It's, it's all very reasonable to me. Um, yeah. Or even do, or even do like what Ohio high school is doing right now, where it's like nobody in the fans except for just family members. Yeah. I, I know here in North Carolina, high school sports, zero fans. There's no adult, no parents, no anybody in the stands. Uh, by the way, Austin, I see your question. We have that a little bit further down on the show notes. We'll, we'll get there. I'm going to skip forward on this as he talks about mm -hmm. all of the deaths we've seen in the country so far. You know, we're all well aware of that again. This is him attempting to misrepresent people pushing back as people not caring about the virus. That's not what's happening. We're talking about wanting some transparency. So that's a complete straw man to tell us, we know how dangerous COVID is. No one, well, some people are saying otherwise, but no one here is saying otherwise. That's not the, that's not the point. So that's a complete straw man. I'm skipping over all of that. 
We understand the disappointment and questions surrounding the timing of our decision to postpone, cancel, fall sports. See, here's the thing. Once again, you don't. You keep saying that we understand the questions and we understand the disappointment. No, you don't because you haven't talked to anyone. You don't understand. And I don't want you to understand the questions. I want you to answer the questions. Talk to people. Let us know. Mm -hmm. That's not, 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 don't, don't understand. Under, oh, Mm -hmm. I understand the question. That's like someone saying, I understand, you know, that's like, that's like a, a twist on the no apology apology. I'm sorry if that offended you. I would like to say that I'm sorry. That's not an apology. In the same way that you understanding questions does not answer questions. And not just answering the question, like he how he has in the past couple of um, appearances that he has, but actually addressing and actually answering the question itself, not just saying things that's not even related to it. Pretty much. Um, yeah. You bring up a, he, he evades his own questions. You know what I mean? In the same way he's avoiding, he like, well, I acknowledge your question. Okay, answer it. Uh, no, I don't think I'm going to answer your question. Sorry, I'm Kevin Warren. By the way, you, you can buy, you can buy it. You can check the show notes. Uh, I have the master link. You can go to the master link. You can go to the merch store and you can buy yourself a Fire Kevin Warren t-shirt. And if enough of you ask me to, I will also pose a fuck Kevin Warren t-shirt. If you guys want that, I'll make it and I'll post it. <sighs> anyway. All right, Kyle. Um, I want to keep going through this, um, but we're running short on time and we really need to quit doing 90 minute episodes. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's go ahead and skip the rest of the letter for now. Um, There is, uh, and this comes to us uh, from Nevada Buck on the, instead of 90 minute episodes, Friday episodes, Austin, I appreciate, I appreciate you. I'm just going to leave it at that. (laughs) Um, So this is uh, according to, and I don't want to read this verbatim, and I'm only going to give you a little bit of it because this is behind the Buckeye Scoop paywall, and I'm not trying to piss off the bosses. Uh, but this comes to us from Nevada Buck, who uh, is an insider on the Buckeye Scoop message board. Um, basically, the Big Ten has been in communication with Fox. Um, they're talking about, and this sort of relates to some of the things Kyle and I were speaking of before creating a pseudo bubble for college football to return it in January. Um, they, they'll resume, they'll, they'll start essentially what we would refer to as the quote unquote fall camp around Thanksgiving. Uh, most of these campuses are devoid of students from December or from basically Thanksgiving and then all the way through December. There's, there's no classes there. So it's going to be a little bit easier to isolate the the student athletes. And so they're going to start their camp then. um, And then they're going to start football on January 1st. They're going to play in dome sites right now. uh, They're limiting this to Indy Detroit in Minneapolis. Uh, Kyle and I spoke Uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before about potentially playing in St. Louis as well. I I have no idea what the condition of that dome is right now. I don't, the Rams don't play there anymore. Is it in complete disarray? I have no idea, but it does not seem to be at least according to Nevada buck. What is, what is happening? Um, uh, Let's see. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to share from that. Again, I don't want to, I don't want to leak all of the paywall content, but that's essentially what's being said. Uh, Kyle, what 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 do you suppose the likelihood is of this actually happening? None, zero. What if, what if, I tell you that the ACC, the Big Twelve, and the SEC 
I'll cancel fall football and adopt a same and or very similar time frame. I would probably up that to probably about 25, 33%. I think if all of the conferences, if all of the Power Five conferences get on board with something like this, then I would say it's, there's a high potential. I would say fairly likely that this happens. Because what makes other sports... But that's a big if. That's a big if. here's, Here's the thing that's different between what we see in the NHL, NBA, even Mm -hmm. MLS when they did their, their... um, bubble, the bubble in Florida. How many players are in each of those teams? Yeah, I, I know it's, it. There's... It's been compared to eighty, or well, how many is allowed to bring? Like sixty-ish, I think. I, I forget the exact number of what each team can bring over when they um, when travel they travel squad. to a other yeah, travel. How many players can they bring on? Let's just say it's 60. 60 times it's more however than many that players in college are football. Each but yeah. One. Well, yeah, that, that's just players, not just coaches and well, no, anybody else. Go- the number is much higher than 60, but we don't need to get caught up in that right it's, now. It's so large. Like, there's no way you can keep a bubble like environment like you see in the NBA and NHL. There's absolutely no way you can. You're going to try to do that. And I mean, Indianapolis isn't isn't a huge city compared to like Detroit or New York or LA or whatever, whatever. But I just I, don't see them being able to in, accommodate. I, I don't see them being able to accommodate that many people, that many players, coaches, staff coming in it's, every weekend. It'll be a pseudo bubble. Um, I think each big 10 team will essentially create their own bubble at home and then do a travel bubble and then go to a hotel okay. bubble. And, and I get that that's not a perfect bubble, which is why I called it a pseudo bubble. Um, because, because if you're going to like Indianapolis though, even when you have the big 10, you have, you have just two teams like, okay, that's fine. But if they're talking about maybe having two games in one day, or even having three or four games in a two game span, there's no way they're going to be able to keep up with hotels and all that for that many players, coaches, staff to be able to do. They, I just don't see it. They might be. I, I mean, it. I I don't know. I don't want to say that I know because I don't know. But for one, you can day trip to Detroit or Indianapolis from Columbus. That's not completely out of the realms of possibilities. Um it's and also, not, you can't do that with Penn State but, or anyone said it's going to take a lot longer to travel, though. Oh, fair enough. But I think that the issue is normally, like you talked about the Big Ten championship game. How many fans are also there, Kyle? There's enough of hotel accommodations to also deal with all the fans. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it's I think it's functionally plausible. I don't know if it's because of all these stuff outside of the just the functionality of it i don't know how possible it is but i think it's functionally possible i don't that that mm-hmm. part of it doesn't bother me so much um i just think that this january season is completely pointless nonsense unless all five of the power five conferences are doing it yeah and that's why i said zero percent unless you get other conferences well on board okay but so, so let's let's do a scenario in which a this this calendar does happen but it's only the big 10 and the pac 12 and like the mac will probably be doing it as well but so for but as far as power five it's only the big 10 and the pac 12 doing this calendar year let's say that actually happens who cares is justin fields gonna play in this season no no one who has any hopes of getting drafted is going to play this because is the is the NFL going to move back the draft and the combine for just the Big 10 and the Pac-12? No. Would they if all five power conferences adopted this calendar? I think that yeah, I think that the NFL probably would do that. The NFL has a free farm league. 
in college football. And they should they should and will do everything in their power to preserve the fact that they get fully formed stars out of college football. Mm-hmm. Well coached, well conditioned, well publicized stars out of college football. The NFL ha- this is one of the NFL's biggest assets that it has over basically all of the other sports as college basketball, you know, the the college basketball has has dwindled over the years as far as being able to produce stars because of the one and dones and before that because of the direct from high schools. So the the NBA has it a little bit, but the NHL, MLB, any of the other major sports you can think of, none of them are being delivered stars straight out of college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, college football absolutely. You got, you, you, you absolutely. Have to get everybody involved yes the nfl one of their biggest assets is college football and they'll protect it if if college football says hey we need a favor for this year because of all of these circumstances the nfl will budge on it but i don't know mm-hmm. if they budge just for the pac-12 and the big 10 yeah agreed in fact i'm just going to go ahead and say that they won't but i think that they would for all five power fives all right, let's move on. We got to move a little bit quickly here. So, uh, talk about a little bit here about Attorney Tom Mars. Yeah, um, he files an FOI Act request against the big about against the Big Ten schools. So, essentially, what he's asking for is just to get all records, public records, um, regarding to any kind of communication. <laughs> it's kind of funny in there too. He mentions about even in uh, hard drives or floppy disks. I thought I got a little chuckle with floppy disks there, but yeah. Either way, just Lo- all kinds. Of, all, He's a lawyer. You have to, you have yes. to cover all the bases. Yes, all communications of any kind between essentially the first of August through when the decision was made to cancel the season of uh, between presidents and Big Ten commissioner Kevin Warren, presidents of and any employee or representative of the Big Ten conference, just really anything regarding. Kevin Warren and anybody within Big Ten um, conference itself, too. Yeah, and just for anyone who doesn't know, uh, an FOI is the Freedom of Information Act. And essentially, all of these communications are public record because these universities are public universities and receive tax... Minus one. one. I was getting there, but yes. Northwestern (laughs) Northwestern does not apply to this. Uh, as they are a private university. But everyone else uh, receive tax dollars and therefore public institutions and therefore all of their communications are public record. Yep. So pretty much that they have a set date of Monday, August 24th at noon to respond. Now, what can they do if they don't meet that? I don't know. We'll wait and see. But they, they... have a official filing of this FOI to the Big Ten. Yeah, it's so funny. Norm- normally when an FOI is filed against your school, and if you're listening to this, I'm just going to assume that is Ohio State. Normally when a FOI is filed against your school, that's normally really, really bad. But when everyone saw this from, from attorney Tom Mars, everyone just sort of cheered. Hey, maybe we'll actually get some transparency. We have to sue 13. I don't, this isn't the lawsuit, but you get what I'm saying. You have to file FOI request against 13 other schools, 13 total schools in order to get transparency. This is where we're at right now. Uh, Tom Mars, by the way, for, for anyone not familiar is the same attorney hired by Justin Fields parents um, mm-hmm. in order to get him immediately eligible. Um, allegedly, I'm going to emphasize that, that this may have been, uh, I, I, I don't know how to say this, but th- this may have happened on behalf of the, the Fields family again, potentially, uh, but that's rumor. So I don't know that that's true. Uh, I think I'm, I'm not going to put any hope that they're going to say anything, but well, they have to. They legally have to. Well, well, here's the question of 
how much are they going to, even though they say they want all public record, how much is actually going to, or if any? It just depends upon how much of the communication was written versus... That's beca- true too. Because, like, if these all happened over Zoom, Zoom doesn't keep these recordings. So you can't just, like, file a request with Zoom to get a copy of the meeting. Those don't exist. Yep. Um, and while... So Kyle and I are IT people. Um, and I know I've been through my fair share of audits. And there's a lot of information that when you know an auditor requests it you are required to give it to them um and i've i've been on the butt end of stuff like this before um that being said i don't i'm i'm not experienced in the public education field uh neither is kyle uh, I've done stuff in medical. I've done stuff for publicly traded companies. Uh, Kyle and I both have a pretty extensive experience in the financial industry. I know what is in those industries, what you have to provide, what you have to record, what you have to keep. And what I can tell you is that nothing that I am familiar with requires, and in some cases forbids, the recording of voice or in this case, voice and video communication. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I, those, those calls, which is where all of the juicy bits happened in a face to face or rather face to webcam communications. That's where all the juicy bits happened. So I don't have a ton of hope for this. Kyle, I have one question to ask you real quick. Mm-hmm. Do you think ACC, SEC, Big 12, do you think they play in that October, November, December schedule that they're currently aiming for? For the record, neither of us know anything for a fact. (laughs) It's tough because like, if you said just SEC, maybe, but- Well, you you can answer them individually. So, I mean, we've we've seen things over the past week of like with universities, students coming back in and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey, there's what's the discord thing in these um, in these universities. There's clusters of positive cases like I've seen it here in the Triangle area where NC State and UNC have big problems going on. But then I saw this morning switch to online classes, have they not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As has well, Notre Dame, as has Michigan State. But then I saw this morning that UNC is like, oh, we're going to have practice, football practice Monday morning then. And just like, there's just, without trying to get, get too much into it, because it, you're going to go have me go on a tangent regarding to other things I don't want to discuss <laughs> right now. But it's, I think they're going to do everything they can to make a season happen, whether it's going to have them try to do essentially a bubble or whatever other means though. How are you going to bubble student athletes when classes are going on? Yeah. I think the ACC is toast. I I want to, I saw a third or a, a quarter. I thought I saw, I don't, I don't have the actual numbers in front of me of the schools have given up on, in-person classes and are going yes. remote. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're really going to justify a football season at that point? Again, this is me saying, I don't nec- I'm not saying Kevin Warren was wrong in canceling football. It's, it's the how about it that I, I think eventually if the ACC says no football, we're, we're going to jump on this January train with the PAC 12, the big 10, everyone else. If the ACC I th- falls, I think that the Big 12 and the SEC will follow suit. And I think if just one of them, the ACC or the Big 12, it, they're going to follow suit. I don't think anyone cares what the Big 12 does. <laughs> well, I, th- I think in their, mind, in their minds, they want the Big 12. That way you have a majority. majority. Yes. Yeah. I get that. And you might be right. And I was just primarily just taking a shot at the Big 12. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I'm 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 with you. Um, so okay, so that that we've discussed what do we think happens, and I think that they I I th- I, I think that they adopt some sort of 2021 model, whether it be a mm-hmm. January or a March or yep. whatever the case might be. I think that I think that they will also delay. Now, here's my next question: Do you want them to? No. Hmm. We disagree. I do want them to. How? If everyone plays in January, we can still have a legitimate national champion. Okay. Yeah. If yeah, them playing in all. You mean play, all of them playing in January? Well, I guess I was asking: Do you want the ACC, the SEC, the Big Twelve to also not play this calendar year? I think is essentially what I'm asking. I would like everybody to play at the same time. Okay. No, no. I Yeah, but the Big Ten's not playing. Like, everyone can let their, their boat conspiracy yeah. theories go. Your yacht-based comp- conspiracy theories are over now. Mm-hmm. Ohio State is not playing in this calendar year, except that they did in January, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, it's not it's not happening. Ohio State will not play until January at the earliest. So you can all let that go. If you're still holding on to that, let that go. I want everyone to play at the same time. And mm. like I said, with the ACC already canceling classes, on uh, in per- in-person classes, with the ACC already canceling in-person classes, like I said, with... I want to say like a third of their universities, counting Notre Dame, who's sort of counts at this point. I don't know how you justify football. No. And and if you justify football, I don't know how you justify continuing to call them amateur athletes. Yep. Which, by the way, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, please do break the wheel. Semi-pro college football, let's make this happen. Let's Mm -hmm. stop lying to ourselves. Let's form a better college football. Listen to last week's episode. Mm-hmm. All right. Super quick here, Jared. Ask, ask Luke Luke Cass. Cass. Yep. Couple of couple of questions here. Uh, Duncan from the Discord asks us, pick one. You can have your system as spelled out in the last episode, or we can collectively wake up in a cold sweat. It's February in 2020 is actually pretty cool. It has to be the latter. Because if I choose the former, as much as I want that model to exist, I'd also be sacrificing the lives of, like, yeah, hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> so that would just make me an asshole. <laughs> I can't. I can't just be like, I like this college football model. Yeah, let those 200,000 Americans die or whatever the horrible number is up to at this point. Yeah. All right. Sun card. Sun card 19 asks us, when you watch football, what do you watch? Um, I try to watch. I typically do watch the the line, um, mm-hmm. the offensive line, the defensive line. Um, there's no point in watching the quarterback. I know. I think that's what most people do. Um, but there's I, I all, all the meets happening up front. If yep. you want to know if they're going to run the ball, the offensive line will tell you. Yes. If you want to know One where of... they're going to run the ball, the offensive line will tell you. Mm-hmm. Most of the time. I mean, there are draw plays and such that, that are designed to lie to you, but for the most part. Mm-hmm. Or even the one where I saw Urban Meyer posted this morning, the um, the jump pass, too. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Last question from Jared the Buckeye on Twitter. Using the hashtag AskSlukast. In December 2021, so moving ahead a year plus now, yeah. after the Big Ten championship game is played and Ohio State is on the podium, if Warren is still there, when he's handing over the trophy to Coach Day, will the boos be louder than, than than during any point of the actual game? Hashtag fire Kevin Warren. I want every player or Coach Day to do essentially like what's his name that Michigan State did to Archie Griffin. Oh. Just go up, just take the just not even eye contact, just take the trophy and just take a couple of steps forward. 
no eye contact. Just take the trophy and just be like, get out of my way. I'm going to take an opportunity once again to tell everyone that there is a Fire Kevin Warren t-shirt in the Sloopcast store. And I will foot the bill to send like 80 of those. Although let me redesign it first so it actually says Sloopcast on it. (laughs) I will foot the bill to send one to most of the players. I don't have that kind of money, you guys. But to like... 40 of the players and like 10 of the coaches. And if they could just like take the shoulder pass offs and then wearing a shirt that says fire Kevin Warren, that would be pretty great. Boy, and by the way, forget December, 2021. If the January season happens and it's like March, 2021, that would be the best opportunity to actually wear that shirt. Yes. Cause I'm hoping by December, 2021, he's not even there. I got the TMC barbecue <laughs> sponsor money. I do. I do. Yes. And we love you for it. And uh, we're, we're once again getting an Apollo visit. All right. That is all the questions we have here. So I think that is all for today's episode. Yeah, that's it. Um, want to encourage getting everyone check out. To- you you just you stepping all over me, Kyle. Everyone, check out the uh, the master link. Uh, through that master link, you can find links to all of our stuff, uh, to our merch store, to our Patreon, um, to uh, all the stuff. The, the merch store is pretty great. I've been adding a bunch of new stuff in there. Um, I just basically make stuff that I would like. That's that's all of it. Um, oh, I want to show everyone something real quick. Apollo, buddy, mm-hmm. you can't stand on me. Uh, this is my, I almost fell. Uh, this is my Columbus Pilots t-shirt. That's in the 7071 store, uh, which is our non sloopcast branded material. Just sort of an offshoot. Uh, it says 7071 on it, which is just the whatever. But it's just sort of non-football stuff. Uh, and you can also find a link to that in the, in the, uh, in the master link. Um, Twitter... You can find all those links in there as well. Uh, if you don't want to follow the links for, for Twitter, you can just follow me at Sloopcast. Kyle, what's your mm-hmm. new Twitter handle? I'm at Sloopcast Kyle. There you go. There's only one way to spell Kyle, right? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Should be. Not like Jared. No, there's a thousand ways to spell Jared. And I once again want to thank the, the parents of at Jared the Buckeye for spelling their son's name correctly. (laughs) No, that's not right, Brawley. Find me one person whose name is spelled like that and that they pronounce it Kyle. That's Kale. (laughs) Kale is K-A-L. Anyway, we're, we're not getting into a spelling or pronunciation Lord help us game. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check out the, the master. People. Yes. Go ahead and check out that. <laughs> we're now we're just getting alt Kyle spellings in the discord. <laughs> no, um, not even internet. <laughs> <laughs> that one's child. <laughs> uh, check out all that. St- if you want to be in the discord and listen to us live and join these group of rambunctious no, see, now, we're, now they're doing my name. Uh, these rambunctious hooligans, uh, make sure to check out our Patreon page. You can also find that in the master link. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner for today? I do not. I'm getting ready to actually watch some sports once we're done here, Jared. Oh, okay. Real quick, I have a question for you. Yes. All right. Who do you got, Braun Strowman or The Fiend? I need some context. I have no idea. (laughs) Braun Strowman or The Fiend? SummerSlam happening tonight, baby. I don't know. I got I got Bayern Munich. I got Bayern Munich right now. (laughs) (laughs) No way the fiend loses tonight. No way the fiend loses tonight. No way. Anyway. We'll still see how that ends up. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, check out the master link. Kyle's got nothing in the Kyle's corner, and um, I think I think that's it. Um, I, I know I just played them not too long ago, but I just saw on my Twitter feed that they're doing a live stream, a full band live stream 
Um, I believe it's August the 29th, but you can check out their Twitter page to find out if that's completely accurate. And again, I just played them not too long ago, but I, I don't care. So uh, once it, so I almost said once again, I hadn't said their name yet. Uh, this is the Cordial Sins. So I'm going to play the Cordial Sins again. Just played them a few weeks ago, but that's no big deal. And uh, you can check out all their stuff and the name of the song down in the doobly-doo. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. This is The Cordial Sins. Hey, YouTube. Let's see if I can actually get Apollo up here now that we're just talking to the YouTube folks. Come here, bud. Come on. Up, ups. Yeah, that's a body. Everyone, this is Apollo. This is the younger of my two puppies. Oh, and we have a. Oh, he was going full shoulders. Yeah, you see, we, we got a Leo here. And we a Leo. We got a Leo. And LG's down there, but she's asleep, so we're going to leave her alone. <laughs> All right, puppy corner. Oh, puppy corner. That's right, we're doing the puppy corner. That was just for you, YouTube. That's a YouTube exclusive. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's do this. I'm a, you want me to do Mad Canadian this time, Kyle? Sure. I'd let, once again like to thank the Cordial Sins for ending today's episode, and of course, want to thank our homie, the Mad Canadian. Uh, for sponsoring today's episode as he's been doing for almost a year now so that's pretty great i'm holding right here the brits blend amazing southwest blend you know what i like to do kyle i like to buy the cheap salsa like just like the half gallon thing of kroger cheap salsa and then just re-spice it and this isn't the only thing i re-spice it with but this is maybe the heaviest lifter of the things i re-spice it with I'll also probably add some fresh cilantro because I, I love cilantro. So I'll probably do some fresh cilantro uh, in abundance of garlic because I, I love I love garlic. And then this gal right here, this is the Brits blend. Amazing Southwest blend. Uh, salsa is my favorite thing to put it in. It's not my exclusive though. Uh, just put it on some chicken because that's great. It's specifically... I don't know about specifically, but it's its main purpose in life, at least according to the Mad Canadian, is a chili blend. And we're coming into chili weather. So make sure um, to hit up some Brits blend for your chili this year. And by the way, can I can I say this? I'm a I'm a I'm gonna put some of you I'm gonna put some of you uh, up to the fire on this one. My biggest issue with most people's chili is that they're too afraid to spice it. I'm talking to you white people specifically, of which I am one, but I'm an Italian and we know how to cook. We're, we're, the, we're the good cooking white people. Season your food more. Don't put some Brits blend in there. Put a lot of Brits blend in it. Don't put some cilantro in there. If you think, oh, I don't like spicy foods. Oh, uh, Mad Canadian says, big shout out to everyone who used the code this week. Huge thank yous. So that's a message straight from the Mad Canadian to you guys. Use more spice. And the Brits blend is not, is not very spicy, but if you use a lot of it, it can get spicy. But spice tolerance and food is just a thing. It's just a See, thing you I'll, get used I'll, to. I'll... Apollo wants it. Apollo does want it. Um, it's spicy food is just a thing you can build a tolerance to. It's like running or like weightlifting or, you know, it's just the more you do it, the more of it you can do. You can build a tolerance to spicy food. Um, so I'm just saying increase the flavor in your food a bit. That's all I'm saying. And the Brits blend uh, and your chili and your salsa is a great gateway to doing that. You can buy that blend, a bunch of other blends. Uh, some exclusive new blends coming out here in a few weeks. And all of that and more can be found at themadcanadianbbq.com. Uh, use promo code SLOOPCAST10 to get 10% off your entire order. You can find that link and that promo code down there in the master link. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. He's got your butts covered. <laughs>